What's going on, Tyler? Winston, how's it going, man? I'm going good, man. Uh, busy day, but um, it's going great. Um, yeah. So, someone had a birthday today. I, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Like, guilty, guilty as charged. I want to ask you how old you are. I already know, but um, yeah, once once you get north of. Uh... Once you get up into those late thirties, you don't really you don't really that interested in counting anymore. You can work it work out as much as you want, eat as well as you want. Things just things just aren't the same. So, well, you're you're aging like fine wine, Tyler. So you you'll be all right. <laughs> all right, man. Well, let's hop yeah, into it. Uh, we've got a, a right. Walgreens today in Arkansas. Yeah, we got a Walgreens uh, yeah. up in uh, up in Northwest Arkansas. Let me share my screen here. Um, Really, really fast because uh, Arkansas. I I didn't know so. Um, right up there by Benton in the north, that northwest corner. So let's you know pop this open. Walgreens. This is the Walgreens right here that we're looking at today. Um, like I said, demographics are vastly improving. They've been improving for the last twenty years. Uh, projected to keep growing. Um. As far as the land is concerned, this is a great lot, but an acre and a half on a lighted corner. Um, you know, you can see it right here on the map. There it is, northwest of Arkansas. Here's the lighted corner with the Walgreens. Big, it's a bigger Walgreens. It's 14,000 square feet. Um, but what's interesting about this one, so, you know, Walgreens is kind of synonymous with triple net leases because um, they've been doing it for a while and there's so many of them. But this lease in particular, uh, I wanted to look at today because as, as an opportunity to talk about the tenant's options and rent bumps when it comes to these, these types of leases. So this lease that we're going to get into today is significantly different than what we're used to, right? And Winston, like most of these assets that, that you know, you're selling on the market, they have what, four or five year, what kind of options are, are, are typical, right? Yeah, I mean, well, it, it always depends. Yeah, it, it, it depends. But like, you know, you'll see a lot of times, you know, three, five year options. I think a lot of Dollar Generals have like five, five year options. You I have never seen 50 one year option renewals. I mean, that's I mean, I'm, personally, I, I view that as being held hostage. Right. Yeah, it's pretty, so, it's pretty crazy, right? Like, like, I mean, it's in terms of options, right? Like anytime the tenant, whoever has the option has the power, right? So anytime the tenant has an option, that investment is worth less to the investor. Anytime you as the investor have an option, investment's worth more, right? If you had the option, you could kick Walgreens at any time, that investment should be worth more than one that you can't do that, right? So here, their option to renew for one year, 50 times in a row is very valuable to them and really bad for an investor. So just to keep that in mind, we're going to discount this Walgreens significantly more than we would another Walgreens with, let's say, a normal, uh, you know, three or four, five year options, right? Or just like any other asset you'd find in the market that probably has two, three, four, five year options uh, on the end of yeah. their on the end of their lease. And another thing that's interesting about this one, and I guess we'll get into that a little bit below before I talk about the rest of this. Another thing that's interesting about this one is it does not have rent bumps. So those are two those are two things that this lease has that make it much worse for an investor and will demand a higher discount rate on your cash on your on your investment than you would typically with a triple net lease investment so um you know most of these triple net lease that you see out there they'll have something like every five years they'll have a 10 percent rent increase or maybe an eight percent rent increase every five years that's that's kind of on the lower end or if you're if you're lucky you have a good lease you'll get two percent every year so this one has zero percent for what what can be you know 10 more years here plus 50 years of options. So you got, they're going to be paying the same rent they're paying today, 60 years from now, right? According to the, to the lease terms here. So just, just imagine that you've seen how much prices have gone up in the last, you know, three years or whatever, two years since the, since the pandemic. Um, even if inflation gets back to something reasonable, that's insane that the rent 60 years from now is not going to be the same. Can you imagine what rent was in 1970, Like, um, so we have to take that into account when we value this property. Tyler, I, I've got a few questions. So you're telling me that uh, that this this one has no uh, no increases in the renewal options 
as excuse me, the renewal option periods as well. Or there's no increases. No increases. I thought it was I thought it was a mistake. So I looked around for other for other leases that were like this. There are a couple of Walgreens on the market that also have no um, no rent bumps at all. Um, so I guess it's not the only one out there, but they didn't have, they don't have 51 year options. I think they had like 10 or 15 years of options. Yeah. You know, I have seen, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of different leases, right? So I have seen where maybe there's not uh, annual increases. Uh, maybe, you know, a lot of times I think a lot of the new dollar general leases are kind of flat, you know, um, in the initial terms, but I don't know that I've seen a flat lease for a total of potentially 75 years, right? Um, so what yeah. we're looking at, as you pointed out, is you've got 10 years remaining on the initial term, and then they have control for the next 50 years, just assuming that they stay in that market. Um, look, Northwest Arkansas has, has been crushing it. Uh, it's a great market. Um, a lot of a lot of population growth, um, good job growth there too. So so it's a really it is a, a very attractive market. Um, so just assuming that they stay there and their their Walgreens, uh, their business model allows them to stay profitable in in, in Northwest Arkansas, uh, they them not paying a rent bump for the next sixty years. Um, wow, that's that's pretty that's pretty oh, that's wild. Crazy. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, so, I mean, for that reason, we're going to have to, we're going to have to underwrite this a little bit differently than, you know, we normally would um, because we have mm -hmm. no rent bumps. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. We'd make no money. So um, let's just get into this real quick. Right. So uh, enough of the, the negatives about Walgreens, right? Um, it is a, yeah. this is a corporate lease, a triple B rated. So if they said they're going to pay you, you're probably going to get paid. Um, so at least those first 10 years are pretty much, you know, guaranteed money in the bank. Um, those rent bumps, if they choose to stay, which they probably will, are also pretty much guaranteed money in the bank, at least, you know, in the near term. Who can predict what a company's going to look like 20, 30, 40 years from now? But, you know, in the short term, you can expect a triple B rated company to, to pretty much pay their to pay their rent, right? Um, they're selling this at a 625 cap. So it's doing 390000 a year in net, uh, in net operating income. And this is an absolute triple net lease. So what they're, they're listing at is 6.2 million, right? So they're expecting you to buy this at a 6.25 cap. Um, given it, if this had regular bumps and regular options, that, that would be, you know, pretty reasonable for the market. You think Winston Walgreens typically um, sell in this range? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, if, if we had 2% high, rent bumps. High, good. Yeah. So... You know, if you were to buy at this at this price, uh, a normal lease, yeah, okay, fine, six point two five. But given this situation, um, you know, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna fly. So, you know, just uh, elaborating here, right? So, if we were to buy this at the price that they're asking, six point two million, um, and we were to make our three ninety a year into perpetuity, we would have. Sorry, let's go to the disposition. So just real quickly, acquisition, 1% fees, um, operating cash flows, there you can see them. I'm putting 8,000 away for capital reserve, even though they don't require it, just the 2% of the NOI. Um, now down here at disposition is where things actually get interesting on this. So the disposition of this in the scenario that Walgreens uh, continues just to stay there for 50 years, um, I chose to treat this as a basically as a cash flow perpetuity. So, you know, if you go back to like finance 101, how do you how do you value um, an infinite cash flow into the future that doesn't change? You def you just take that cash flow and you divide it by whatever your required rate of return is, right? So, basically, what you would do here is you would use the exit cap rate would have to be equal. You forget what the market cap rates are. The exit cap rate is going to be equal to whatever you would want to discount a 50 year, essentially a perpetuity uh, cash flow is into the future, right? So I'm choosing 7% here. I think seven, seven and a half is, is, a, is reasonable given that it's Walgreens, um, but, and a triple B ready company, blah, blah, blah. If you look at the bonds that you can get on the market, you're getting them in like five and a half, six. So if you use seven, seven and a half to discount these cash flows, um, you are getting a slight premium over, you know, what you would get for a corporate bond at the same at the same rating. Um, 
Winston, what do you what do you think about about discounting these these cash flows? What do you think about valuing basically a perpetuity or fifty years of cash flows? No, I think how you just outlined it is really the only way you can look at it. I mean, I think um, I think it's the only way. Um, I, I believe that you know, oftentimes when we look at the initial year one or year zero, however you want to say it, uh, NOI, you know, a lot of folks never really look, um, they throw the cap rate on it and they look at the purchase price that most people don't look at the blended cap rate, which even in our underwriting here, I don't think we look at a blend blended. I know that we, we, we do a little bit of it, but we don't have a true blended cap rate. Um, but you can't do that here. It's it's you just you you just can't do that. So just going off the traditional cap rate method, I don't think works when you have this type of cash flow, just a fixed mm -hmm. for fifty to sixty years. Yeah, I so mean, I, I, this all is clear, but I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around exactly yeah. how to evaluate. Well, I think look, I, I think the 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 idea is it's very unlikely they're going to leave. Um, us, mm -hmm. you know, they have a fixed rent for the next, as long as they want, basically, and they can leave at any point they have, I mean, they have one year options. So the vast, you know, it's very, very likely that they're going to stay. So I'm using scenario one is 95% and that's the perpetuity, right? That's at 390 for 50 years. And if you do the math, it's actually pretty close to a perpetuity. 50 years is like, uh, like hundred, 200,000 less than if you just valued it that way. Um, and I'm using a 7% cap. I, you know seven you could use seven and a half whatever um but whatever you you use the price you're going to sell it at um at this position is going to be less than what what they want you to pay today right so it's 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 really not it doesn't look like a good deal at the price that they're that they're putting it and then down here in in scenario two um just real quickly in the case that they actually did leave at one point you know you've got fourteen thousand square feet you're going to have some top some cost of adaptive reuse um, you know, maybe you can get the same rent that they were paying. Um, but you know, having to adapt 14,000 square feet and if Walgreens is leaving, you know, who else is, why, why are they leaving? Right. Then, then how much rent are you really going to get coming in if some, if a new tenant comes in? So I'm not super bullish on the retenanting scenario either. So even in the retenanting scenario, I'm assuming that you're probably going to lose money. You're going to be selling this thing at a, at a net with net proceeds, less than what you're going in at the price they're asking. Um, you find that reasonable, Winston, or or do you have any other idea about yes. the pretending scenario? No, no, I don't. I mean, well, I guess I would add that look, there's a lot of reasons why a Walgreens may not exist in 25 years, right? Um, there's a lot of unknowns there. Um, I think in a in a traditional sense, you know, in 10 years, will there be someone that can pay the rent that Walgreens pays today? Maybe not. But look, the thing for the most part, year over year, they they got into this 15 years ago, right? So they started paying what I believe was 390,000 um, a year, what, 15 years ago? Is that right, Tyler? Yeah. Yeah. So what does that come out to per square foot? Do you know? 28, is that 28 Yeah, I've got, bucks? It, I've got it right there. 28 bucks, yeah. Yeah. So look, I mean, I would assume that 15 years ago, 28 bucks a foot was pretty, pretty daggum high. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have a good answer for you. I, I think that if you put this out um, 25 years into the future, I have to believe that the going rate in Northwest Arkansas is going to be more than $28 a square foot. Yeah. You are going to have significant build out costs. You know, as you have increased rent, you're also, you know, inflation is going to, going to take our labor and materials much higher as well, just naturally over a 25 year period. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of rambling to say, I don't fully agree with you that, um, someone can't pay that same amount i believe that in in 20 25 years the rent rate per square foot should be higher no one has a crystal ball um but mm -hmm. with that said the build out 
for for adaptive reuse is, is most definitely going to be higher as well. Yeah, and I mean, That's look, my... this is a great piece of land. This, yeah, I agree. I, you're right. This is a great piece of land as well, right? So you are going to be able to to reuse it. You're going to be able to adapt it. Um, you know, and whether you get great rent or average rent or, you know, whatever for that in that scenario. And again, I think it's an unlikely scenario because of just how powerful uh, this lease is for Walgreens. Um, you know, maybe you're going to lose a little bit of money. Maybe you're going to gain a little bit of money. But the fact is we're, we're giving this a small, a small percentage of happening. So, you know, if we change this a little bit up or down at the end of the day, it's not going to change our analysis that much. Um, and, you know, the analysis that we're that we have right now with this purchase cap rate is pretty bad. So let's just let's just look at these numbers here real quick. So if we go down to the IRR analysis um, with the numbers that we have, right? So here's the leverage cash. Let's assume you put 50% debt on this, right? Uh, with six and a half percent. So the unlevered IRR is 4.8% and the levered IRR is 3.1. So you can do better than that just about anywhere today. Um, I don't I, I don't see any reason to buy a Walgreens in Northwest Arkansas to make, you know, 3.1% levered IRR just doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. Um, Winston, I mean, you're going to, you're going to put your money, you're going to stick 3 million in, in a Walgreens to make 3.1%. I'm not, I'm definitely not. There may be someone out there that, that wants to do that, but that's, that's not me. And I think that we can find others um, a better a better levered levered and unlevered IRR than that. So just to you know, and just talk about that exit cap rate, right? We use seven percent as our discount rate. If we just modify that up and down a little bit, up down to six point four, you know, up to seven point six, it doesn't get much more attractive. I mean, we're still you know, uh, in the you know, if we use a six point four, which I think is super low for this investment, um, we're still in the fours for for our, for IRR. So um, what's really what we really need to do is is look at this from an MPV perspective. So if we, um, you know, break this thing down, does that not want to open for some reason? There we go. Okay, so we break this thing down, right? So our MPV analysis, we said Walgreens a triple B uh, triple B rated company. So the first ten years, I'm calling income cash flows the first ten years. So these are the ten years that they're going to pay us. Um, we can discount those at a slight, uh, a slightly higher discount rate than a triple B rated bond is because of liquidity, um, because of this uncertainty um, that we have in the future, et cetera, right? It's more difficult. We have transaction costs. So if we discount the income cash flows those next 10 years at 6%, right? Um, and we discount the disposition cash flows, which are which is the perpetuity that we talked about above at 7%, which we did above, um, we come in with a suggested purchase cap rate of 7.15%. So nearly 100 basis or 90 basis points, basically higher than what they're saying. So the suggested purchase price in this scenario where we're using these discount rates is 5.4 million rather than the 6 point, whatever it was, 6.23 million that they're asking. Um, for me, 5.4 million, you know, it's going to get you a levered and un unlevered IRR in that six and a half to seven range is more reasonable, um, you know, maybe for, for owning a Walgreens in this area. Uh, you know, I don't know if you think I'm shooting to the moon here, Winston, or if I'm, if these cap, if these discount no. rates are still too, too low, too high. No, look, I mean, I want to say this, there's a buyer out there, out there for this property, right? Um, this does fit for certain, for a certain individual. It just fits. Um, we're looking at this through a lens of, of us and kind of the traditional buyers and that, that we work with, right? So, um, we're biased towards, towards how we're viewing this. Um, but there is a buyer out there where this works for. Um, and so just, just keep that in mind, but no, I don't, I don't think you're totally crazy. And I think that, um, this is the best way to really underwrite this, which is a lot different, which is why, you, you know, we kind of picked this one to underwrite today is. This is just a different, a different structure, at least structure than we're accustomed to. So, um, I think you're on point. I, I know that the seller brokers won't like uh, what we just came up with, uh, and possibly the seller. But 
for us and how we're we are underwriting this that's how we view it uh and that's that's how we that's how we value it uh evaluate at that number and i i agree with that number um i think that's still relatively an aggressive price that we're offering on a walgreens that really doesn't have to make a commitment in in 50 years right so I am not a fan of the 50 year, one year options. I'm not a yeah. fan at all. Um, not even a little bit. But it's fantastic. Yeah, I, mean, I, would, I think for this, for at a 7.15 cap, I think this is a deal for someone. It's still, uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be probably closer to that, that eight cap range before I got interested. But I think for someone, you know, at 7.15, close to a seven cap. Um, you can make a case that it's that it's fairly valued. I just think at six point two five, it's not very fairly valued for everything we've just, we've discussed up to this point. Yeah. Hey, what uh, have you looked at the graph? I mean, how does this align with kind of the recent comps? Were you able to do that for this one? I didn't pull those in graphic form for this one. I just kind of ran through some of the recent comps for um for Walgreens, just you know, um, offhand. Um, they're yeah. selling kind of in this range. You know, I've seen, yeah. I've seen six fives, sixes. Uh, I think I even saw a seven, but I think that one had, had, had only a couple of years left on its lease. Um, so I don't, I don't think this 6.25 is out of range for Walgreens, but like we've discussed this entire time, the lease structure here is really what, um, makes this less attractive and should force us to discount the cash flows, uh, at a higher rate, basically. No. Yeah. I, I, we're on board on uh, we're we're together on this one. I I, I totally agree with you. I, I don't think I have anything else to add. Cool. Well, I think that was just you know a good example we wanted to go through this week. Uh, looking at basically look just looking at lease structures and, and the importance of how of of how you really need to look at you know what are the rent bumps, what kind of options does the tenant have, and you know what kind exactly if it's an absolute triple net lease or double net or whatever makes a massive difference in your discounted cash flow analysis. And, um, you know, I'm glad we had the opportunity to look at this one this week. Excellent. Well, thanks, Tyler. Um, great job today. And look, man, try not to eat too much cake. <laughs> All right, man. Cheers. Have a good one. All right. See ya. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody.